Hello. My latest COVID isolation project has been to build this uh, wicking bed. A wicking bed is just a fancy name for a, a raised bed that has a water reservoir underneath it that you water from below rather than watering from the top. You might have seen um, pots like that that have a little reservoir underneath and the, the plants uh, suck up the water. So this is a similar kind of thing. There's quite a um, specific way of making a wicking bed and let's have a look. The first step is to build the bed itself, the raised bed. This one is uh, 450 meters deep. That sounds, that's about your minimum. You can go higher if you want it higher. I got this fancy kit from uh, Modbox. I can highly recommend them. It was pretty good. The uh, 450 gives you enough room to have the different layers that you need. If you're making it higher than 450, then you put some fill underneath that um, and then build the, the wicking layers on top of that. The other important thing about the structure of the uh, raised bed is that it needs to be level. It needs to be level because you want uh, an even distribution, an even level of water. Now getting it even, uh, you use a, a, a level like that. The way to do that is down here at the, at the base level. See I've packed up that end, put in some supports at that end and then leveled it out up to that end. It wasn't exactly flat when I started but that's so the leveling thing you have to do beforehand as part of the laying a, a flat foundation. So this is just one corner here I've just lifted up the material so that you can uh, have a look at it. So having a look at the different layers of the wicking bed the first thing we did on the inside was put this waterproof layer that's just to hold as much water in so that the water is not going being absorbed back down into the soil but you've got really a reservoir of water that sits at the bottom the next thing we did was add a whole layer of scoria scoria is a volcanic rock that's a little bit porous so it's ideal for holding in the water it's just a great uh, water retaining layer so after the waterproof membrane and the scoria the next membrane is a wicking membrane a felt kind of substance that will allow the water to come up but the soil won't um, go through so it allows the soil to sit on top and the water pool to be below um, and this is a porous membrane that allows the water to flow between those two layers. You see we've got two holes at the bottom of our uh, wicking bed. One for a water input, that's this one here, and the other for a water output. And so we're going to have this whole bottom plank worth of uh, flooded scoria at the bottom of the wicking bed. So the hose is right next to the wicking bed. The water comes in in that first level and now it's time to turn off the hose because we've reached the right level of water. The hose is off so we'll turn this tap off so that no, the water can't leak out. that and then eventually that will stop dripping because the water is at the right level so there we go we've got water from the ground all the way up to this level it's just a pool of water at the bottom of this wicking bed so just to recap we started with the timber structure and then on the inside we put the waterproof membrane one plank's worth of 
scoria. The next layer is this porous membrane that the water can come through. This is a fancy system. The very last thing they do is then add this layer of plastic. Uh, I think that's it's a food grade plastic. I think it's just simply so that uh, none of the chemicals leach out of the wood into your soil. I think that's an abundance of caution. So there we are. We now have a full bed with all the layers in it. Uh, the next thing is to fill it with soil. Well, the wicking bed has been an amazing success. It's uh, about six months later now. We're towards the end of summer, the beginning of autumn now. And the vegetable crop has been amazing. Look at today's uh, harvest. The tomatoes and peppers, uh, binti, uh, okra. Really, it's been a fantastic uh, addition to the garden. I haven't had to water that much. It's been a very wet season as you can see it's raining again today but uh, over the whole of summer I've had to water our wicking, wicking bed perhaps uh, twice in the whole time whereas in normally in Australia and Canberra vegetables over summer would need sometimes daily if not weekly watering. So the watering part has been amazing. Tomatoes are as happy as you'd like. A really great addition to the garden.